Imagine traveling from Toronto to Montreal in a mere 39 minutes. A pipe dream? Well, at least something of a pipeline. A Hyperloop plan connecting those cities has been chosen as a finalist in a competition to test out Hyperloop technology. Ten corridors around the world have been selected in this Hyperloop One challenge. Sebastien Gendron is co-founder and CEO of Toronto startup Transpod. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Does this mean that we are closer, at least, to riding Hyperloop technology here in Canada? You know what? Yes, every day it's becoming closer. Uh, today at Transport, we have a, a, a three, five year plan to get that product uh, ready for commercialization. Right. So we're looking at certification by 2022. You, your company, yeah. You, you hope to have me riding in it by 2025. There's a whole lot going on around Hyperloop, Hyperloop technology, Hyperloop pods, Hyperloop One's competition. What is your role in all of this? So. Our role today is to develop the technology, so we, we act as a private company to develop the pod and the technology behind the infrastructure. And so this Hyperloop One competition, you guys are out there sort of lobbying, you're, yeah. you're you know, behind the bid for the Toronto-Montreal corridor. Yes, correct. And uh, that competition is actually uh, helping us in a way that the more players are interested by right. that corridor, the more chance we get to we have a chance to get that uh, line uh, built. So you, you're, you're up against, I mean, I've got the list of all the other uh, major cities here, Chicago to Columbus, Dallas to Laredo, Texas, uh, Cheyenne to Pueblo, Colorado, Miami to Orlando, Mumbai to Chennai, uh, Edinburgh to London, Glasgow to Liverpool. What is Toronto Montreal's pitch? Why is this the one that they should choose? Why? First, because we have the two major Canadian cities which are not yet connected with a decent transportation system. Uh, the uh, Trudeau's government have been pushing hard uh, for new infrastructure project and a big push in, uh, also on innovation. So I would say that Canada is, is moving ahead with this typical uh, kind of project. And this is, and I find every time I talk about this, I, I find it staggering. Toronto to Ottawa in 27 minutes, and then another 12 minutes from there to get yep. to Montreal. So 39 minutes from downtown Toronto, to downtown Montreal. How would this, let's say Hyper One, mm -hmm. this competition has now 10 cities or 10 corridors to choose from. Let's say they pick the Toronto Montreal corridor. What happens then? Who builds this thing? How does it get built? So to build that, we need to partner with construction companies such as Acom or Hatch or uh, SNC-Lavalin and right. also Canadian uh, Pension Fund, which got the financing to build such a corridor down the road. So th this is a completely private, this isn't going to be like a public-private partnership where the province takes on some and the feds take on another. You want this to be all private. Yeah, that's the main objective. And today, those two cities have been picked up because we have enough ridership today right. to make sense for those private companies. And, I mean, to ride from Toronto to Montreal in 39 minutes, I think people would be lining up to pay a lot of money for that. What do you think that would cost? Actually, our objective at Transport is to keep it affordable for uh, uh, Canadians. So for such a corridor, we're targeting a price ticket one way between 60 to $80. Come on. Yeah, come on. It's cheaper. If you look at the uh, infrastructure uh, cost study we released uh, over the summer, right. we're kind of 30% cheaper than the high speed rail project which has been announced recently. And we're really working hard to keep those numbers where they are today. Uh, how important is it going to be able to figure out how to get the land to lay this out. I mean, the, the, that whole rail corridor is all province and, and federal land. So not only, also owned by some private companies. If you right. look into the details, even that HSR uh, project between the Windsor and Toronto, right. Right. Uh, Hydro One is part of it. Right. If you look at the, the right of way between uh, Toronto to uh, Montreal, I, uh, Toronto Hydro got some land too as well. So there is different options. We could work as well with uh, CNNCP uh, right. to use right. their railway corridors, different options. Where are we in the, the evolution of this? Because like I said, there's this competition that I think the students at Waterloo and students mm -hmm. at Memorial University of Newfoundland, they're involved, there's you guys doing this. Feels like there's a lot of sort of irons in the fire on Hyperloop technology. Where are we? Are, are, have we tested them yet? We, we haven't. So we've seen some tests. Uh, from our side, we started the industrial development both in Europe and in Canada. Yeah. So we have a three to five years plan to get it to commercialization. We're expecting a full-scale prototype by 2020. Right. 2022, the certification, and at the same time, the start of the construction of the first line to get it operational between 2025 and 2030. 
Uh, Canada's more involved in this than I think a lot of people either know or would expect. I mean, we're, we're about to see, have we already got approval for a Hyperloop test uh, track in Alberta? Yeah, we, we had a, the approval. We, uh, a motion went through uh, last week uh, at the city of Calgary right. uh, to uh, build uh, a, a test center test, yeah. a test center over there. So we're in good shape in Alberta, I have to say. Uh, we keep working with the Ontario and Quebec government to get that moving and as well as with the uh, federal government. We, we were talking a lot about the story in the, the newsroom today. And about like how much a car changed our world, how much the plane changed our world, how will the Hyperloop so change our society? This uh, system will clearly uh, bring to people what the internet brought to information. So it will shrink distances to a point where yeah, you could really uh, uh, rethink the uh, commuting landscape uh, right. we, we have today. Well, I, I mean, I could live in Montreal and commute to Toronto faster than my producer who lives in Whitby commutes to downtown right now. That, yep. that would be a dramatic shift. Uh, would it change? Like the, the car had all these changes in, that weren't intended. That, you know, when you think about when we, we changed highways, it built suburbs. Would it change? Would it have dramatic impact on how we live, on what our society is like? Yeah, definitely, especially on the um, housing market, even in Toronto. Uh, we know that we, we, we talents are kind of leaving the cities. Right. And, uh, and tomorrow, if we connect it to Waterloo at that speed, you can definitely buy a bigger house in right. Waterloo and, and commute every day in a decent uh, time. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, well, definitely. we'll follow up on this because I want to know where things stand. Nice yep. to see you. Thanks for taking part. Thank you very much. Sebastien Gendron is co-founder and CEO of Toronto startup Transpod.